have created a content creation map for you and it's basically a new formula so I want you to um, definitely be ready to take some notes okay this is gonna be really really important um, and it just came to me like yesterday <laughs> or two days ago and I've been working on it since so I'm excited about this so okay so I'm gonna do this whole whiteboard thing so we're gonna talk about content creation okay so creating content whether you're on Instagram Facebook doesn't matter okay it's honestly most of the stuff that I teach works across platforms okay unless it's like a formula that's specific to you know a certain platform but most of the things that I teach are going to work across both platforms so we're going to talk about content creation okay I feel like I need a microphone or something oh it's backwards Jason can we flip it uh, no you can't you can't flip it I don't think so I don't know how to do that in Zoom. is it good on your end be okay cool record, so. okay yeah. All right, so there, there are three main types of content that you want to make sure that you are creating, okay? The first type of content, and I'm going to take you through the three, okay? The first type of content is for network expansion, okay? So network expansion. This is the kind of content that you are going to be creating to bring people into your network okay this is the type of content you're going to be creating that's going to magnetize those people and attract them into your audience okay that's the easiest way to build your audience and that's one reason that i still prefer facebook over instagram even though i use both um is because on instagram you can't share content right so if i see like a really awesome um story or photo like you can't really share it in the same way like yeah you can forward something in a private message but it's not like really the same so you're not people aren't going to be able to find you in the same way that they can find you on facebook by putting out really great content okay so the first type of content is for network expansion make sure you write that down all right the second type of content is storytelling okay and storytelling is going to be getting to know you that is um that is what's going to keep them there once you've attracted them into your network with valuable content then you're going to keep them there by storytelling okay so that's the second type of content and then the third type of content is lead generation i don't know if this is backwards for you guys it's backwards for me but um it'll just help me focus to do the whiteboard so um so the third type of content is lead generation okay that is the content where you are actually selling to your audience okay so you are um you're talking to them about your product or your opportunity so the first type of content is network expansion um, that type, I'm going to take you through everything I'm trying to see but you guys are getting my eyesight is getting worse with age <laughs> I'm gonna take you through these bullet points okay um, okay so network expansion this type of content right here is what I like to call shareable content okay this is where you are providing some sort of value for other people okay so this is your value this is the what am I an expert at okay so this is where you are teaching what you know you are teaching those valuable things that are going to attract people into your audience and then with the storytelling So this content, what this is going to do is this is going to keep people there. Okay, so you've attracted them in with uh, the top five, you know, ways to I don't know, just expand your network. I'm just going to use that as an example. So let's say you put out a video, the top five ways to expand your network, and it gets shared. You get new followers, right? Well, now you've got to keep them there. Okay, now you've got to keep them there. You got, and this is where honestly, probably most of my content. Is in the storytelling phase okay so the least amount is the lead generation but you got to put out the great value right you've got to give people something that they want you have to give people a reason to follow you 
And then you have to allow people to get to know who you are as a person through storytelling. And so that's where most of my content falls within the storytelling category. That's why it doesn't necessarily always connect to my business, but it, it helps people understand who I am. It allows people to know who I am as a person, what I'm all about, what I'm passionate about, and what's happening in my life, right? So you have your storytelling category. And um, I'm just gonna pull this chart up. I have like a flow chart over here on my computer that I made with like a mind mapping thing. So it's like all fancy and everything. Um, so some of the questions that you wanna ask, you know, under the storytelling is, um, what's happening in your life right now, okay? What's happening in your life right now? What's going on with your kids, your family, your pets, your business, okay? Everyone has something that's happening in their life. And even if you think, you know what, my life is totally boring, nothing exciting is happening in my, li in my life, there are stories that you can be telling. Like how many of you have seen the story that I've kind of been carrying on about my teenage daughter. Go ahead and just drop it in the chat because I can only see like four people right now. Actually, I can only see two people because I see Valerie's sunroof. She's driving. Okay, how many of you can relate to that because you either were a teenager at one point, I think everyone on this call was a teenager at one point. I think we're all older than 19 years old. You were either a teenager yourself, right? Or maybe you have your own teenager and your kids are growing into that phase. So. It's like Ellie says, it's something that's relatable. It doesn't really lead to anything. I'm not directing people to buy a product from me or about my opportunity. I'm not really giving value, but I'm giving value in a way that I'm, I'm sharing a story with people so they can relate and it makes them laugh. I like to make people laugh, okay? Sarcasm is my love language. If you guys haven't figured that out yet, uh, I told one of the girls this weekend, like, if I haven't teased you yet, it's because I don't like you. I'm just kidding. Um, it's, not, it's just probably because I don't know you well enough. But um, I like humor. That's, that's my thing. I like to make people laugh, okay? So ask yourself, like, what are the stories that it was, it was Stephanie. <laughs> uh, what, are the, what are the stories that you want to tell? And who are, your, who are your characters? Who are the characters that you can bring in to your storyline, right? So... Um, for example, one of the little supporting roles or extras in my storyline is Will, the coffee guy across the street. How many of you have seen my Instagram stories with my CBD coffee? Okay, I see some hands going up. You can, you guys, when I ask you a question, you can just drop it in the comments because I can't, I can't see. Okay, so, um, so whenever the girls came in for our retreat this weekend, we went over there and they already knew Will and they already wanted to try the coffee because they had seen him as a supporting role in my story. And that might not seem like a big thing, but it's just bringing people into my life. It's not something that a lot of people have access to. Most people don't have a CBD coffee shop, like right across the street, like walking distance. I could literally walk over there, although it's freezing. So I'm not gonna be doing that today. <laughs> it's been really cold since Sunday. We had a cold snap here. So ask yourself, who are the characters and what are the storylines that I'm, I'm telling, okay? So that's going to be your storytelling category. Um, okay, and then also under that category, you're going to want to talk about your, and I probably need more space up here. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to just go up here with storytelling. So it's just going to cut right through here. Um, and this is also where you're going to cast your vision. What are your goals? Where are you going? The people who follow me know that I am ambitious as fuck, okay? They know that I am ambitious. They know that I have goals. They know that I am going places, right? Because I posted last night, I live under the motto that one day I'm gonna be somebody. That way I always keep working towards becoming that person. Whereas a lot of people get to a point in their life or their business and they think, oh, I made it. Like people already know me. And you can't think like that, okay? Like you got, you got to think like, no, I'm continuing to move, I'm continuing to grow, and I'm going to do that until the day that I die, okay? So cast your vision. Let people know what your goals are, where you're going in life. Like people follow me in my journey to Colorado, right? Um, people have followed me in my hair journey. People have followed me in my food journey. People have followed me in all different types of journeys in my life that I just share with my audience, okay? So this is also where you're gonna cast your vision because this is part of storytelling. So what happens if you don't hit a goal? What if you put a cast a vision, you put a goal out there and you don't hit it in the timeline 
that you said you were going to hit it. You let people know, hey, you know what? I didn't make my goal. Why? Because it's part of the story. It's part of the story, and it makes you more real, and it makes you more relatable. Olympic athletes don't just show up to the finish line, okay? They're not like, yep, I'm the victor, I'm the winner. Like, No, they, they train. They have lots of setbacks. They probably have a lot of injuries. They have to make sacrifices in their life to be able to put so much energy into becoming the best of the best, right? Um, and we were heading to the top of Pike. Speaking of Olympic athletes, we were probably a mile from the top, uh, which way up there in the clouds. Did any of you guys see the stories from the behind the scenes of that? And there was these people on bikes. And if you've never like climbed a mountain or been to the top of a mountain, the oxygen like gets thinner and thinner, so it becomes harder and harder to breathe. <laughs> yeah. Uh, these people were biking to the top of the mountain. And we were like, holy crap. <laughs> um, actually, we saw them on the way up, and then on the way back down, they were, they were a lot closer. So when we passed by, like, we cheered for them because I know like, what it takes you know, to, to be the best of the best. And like, I'm not going to do that. You're never going to see me biking to the top of the mountain, but I have a lot of respect for someone who would. Okay, so you have to tell the story, and you have to share the setbacks too. That's why a lot of times, anytime I share a win with people and I say, hey, I hit this goal or I got this check or I went on this trip or whatever it may be, I'm always constantly reminding people of where I came from. Does anyone notice that? That I'm always reminding people of where I came from because it makes me more relatable and it reminds them, oh, wow, yes, she came from here. And if she did that, then I can do that too. Instead of seeming like super un relatable, which is something that I actually am struggling with now that I am doing as well as I am doing is trying to make sure that I am still being relatable to the average person. So make sure that you are spending probably the majority of your time doing uh, storytelling. You're, you know, I'm going to come up with the exact ratio because I got to think about this, <laughs> um, but you're doing your storytelling. I mean, maybe it's even your dog. I mean, we've all bought into the storyline with Stephanie and her dog, right? Um, Duncan. Duncan, the Labradoodle who loves coffee and has great hair, and now he has a cute little baby friend, his sister. Okay, so everyone's been following the story because she continues to show us Duncan and talk about Duncan as if he's a human being, right? I brought my pets into my story yesterday. You saw them cat and dog fight. <laughs> that was cute. Um, so just think about the different characters and the storylines that you can continue to elaborate on, and it doesn't have to be something huge. It could be literally something as simple as like, this is what's going on with me right now. <laughs> laundry. Okay. Like I have not bought a laundry basket because I'm like, Oh, like I'm not going to have laundry in the laundry basket. It's just going to get folded and go up. Has anyone ever done that? And what happens is I keep moving this pile of clothes from my bed to the floor, to the closet. And because I don't have time to hang them up. <laughs> So it could be something as simple as that, like a storyline around your laundry. You just have to start getting creative. You, start, you have to start asking yourself, what is something that is happening in my day-to-day -day life that people can relate to? Maybe someone cuts you off in the carpool line. Maybe you have this ongoing saga about like picking your kids up in the carpool line. Like Whatever it is, it's those little things people actually really like a lot. Okay, So start asking yourself where you can start doing more storytelling so you can allow people to get to know you more as a person, okay? And then this is also where you're going to, and this can kind of be in both of these categories, so I'm gonna kind of push this over here, but this is also where you can inspire people, okay? So you can kind of use both of those categories to inspire people, so a lot of times for me to get um, inspired you can drop in the comments where you get your inspiration from. Like if I'm feeling dry for content, I'll put on a podcast or an audio book or I'll watch some videos on YouTube. Or lately I've been watching the Kardashian clips on YouTube because those chicks are brilliant. And I want to watch what they're doing, right, to see how they're doing it, um, to get inspiration. Or maybe for me, like I pick up a Cosmo magazine. I love Cosmo magazine. Um, that's my favorite. It's just like the layout, the way it's done and everything. So, yep. Podcast, motivational, YouTube, card on. Yep. So whatever it is for you, you can use that to create storytelling. Maybe you, maybe you're listening to a podcast, and the podcaster talks about something that makes you think about something that's happened in your life that's related to you. So then you take that content and you apply it to what's happening in your life or what 
situation that you went through and you use that to create content whether it's for storytelling or it's for network expansion because you're teaching sometimes you're like oh I know what I need to teach now because he said XYZ and I say it the same but different or whatever okay so you're gonna you're gonna make sure that you're putting the inspiration in those two categories right all right so we have our network expansion where we're creating the shareable content that's providing value and you're sharing your expertise or something that's of value to people. So I think a lot of times people get caught up on this. This is also where you're gonna be doing your, your three core pillars or network for network expansion, okay? So if you didn't figure that out yet, most of your live content needs to be for network expansion. Some of it can be for storytelling and lead generation, but a lot of it is for network expansion, for for giving value. So for example, today I'm gonna to do a live video. This isn't what I would consider to be my expertise, but it's something that um, would be a value to people. I'm gonna share how to create an epic team retreat. And I'm gonna give the behind the scenes of what went into my thought process of how I did it, why I did it, what I spent money on, um, the experience that we had, just so people who are following me, who are like, oh, that's so awesome. I wanna be able to do that for my team can see like what I did. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna be doing that letter later today, so make sure you watch for that. So even though it doesn't fall under my expertise, it's still valuable and it relates back to my business, right? Okay, so I am kind of creating leads in that way because I'm creating interest, right? I'm, I'm, I mean, I even have people who weren't on my team and weren't even in my Nate say, oh my gosh, I was so jealous. I was, I was like following your stories. I was stalking your stories online to see what you guys were doing. Um, yeah, okay, I can't read all the comments. So, so network expansion, storytelling, and then lead gen, okay? So for lead gen, for lead gen, the first question you need to ask yourself, like, so you need to generate leads, and you're like, you know what, I've done a lot of this, and I've done a lot of this, but you know what, we have a flash sale happening right now. Let's say we have a flash sale. So what's the question you're gonna ask yourself? What do I love about these products? What do I love about these products? How have these products or this product in particular helped me achieve XYZ or overcome XYZ problem? And what is my result, okay? So you always, if you're struggling to create lead generation content, always go back to the question, why do I love these products? Does it help me save time? Does it help me save money? Does it make my hair shinier? Does it give me more volume? Does it help to control my frizz? Has it helped my hair grow in? Um, did I lose hair postpartum and now it's coming back in or whatever, whatever your story is. Okay. Did it used to take me an hour to blow dry my hair and now I can do it in 15 minutes. Okay. So you have to think like a marketer. You have to think, what is that problem that I'm going to help people solve? And why do I love, it always stems from why do I love these products? Okay. Why do I love these products? So that's the first question. And then you're going to ask the same question. about the opportunity okay you're going to ask the same question about the opportunity why do i love this opportunity how has this opportunity changed my life what has this opportunity allowed me to do and a lot of times the biggest question i get is brooke i haven't made a lot of money yet you know i haven't had a lot of success yet if you've even gotten one paycheck one paycheck you can talk about how you got an extra paycheck this month even if it was just 15 dollars. okay it's still extra money would any of you turn away $15 if I tried to give you $15 right now? I wouldn't. Like, I, I still pick up pennies whenever I pass by <laughs> on the street. That's like my little sign from angels. I'm like, oh, it's a penny. So ask yourself, how has this opportunity changed my life? Is it allowing me to be with my kids during the day? Is it allowing me to stay home from work? Is it allowing me to take my kids to the zoo? Maybe some of you don't have kids. Is it allowing me and my husband to go out on a date night? Maybe you don't have a husband. <laughs> Is it allowing me to treat myself to a massage every month? You know, start thinking little. Think about the little things that you've been able to do. Maybe you just were able to put a take of gas in your car. I remember what it used to feel like to not have money for gas. How many of you have ever been there? Ellie says, it, Is it covering your emergency vet visit? So you have to start thinking like that. You guys, I remember when I could barely put gas in my car. 
I don't know if you guys remember in the late 90s when the prices were so high, like it almost bankrupted us, or no, early 2000s. Because when I first started driving, gas was like 80 to 90 cents a gallon, and then it went, it was like between three and four, four bucks a gallon. It was, it was high. Um, so for a lot of something that they struggle with. So if you're able to fill up your tank of gas and all you had to do was make a few posts on social media to be able to pay for your gas, you need to be talking about that, okay? So that's going to be lead generation content. That's going to be content that is going to be specifically giving people a call to action and showing people, I have a product, a service, or an opportunity that is value to you, okay? And then the third part of lead generation and this is probably my favorite favorite one overcoming objections okay so that was one of the the fastest ways that i built my network last year even bigger was with putting out great content but i also and keep in mind that some of this is going to lapse over okay you're going to have some of this happening Okay, but these are the three main categories. So whatever objection you're continuing to hear, whether it's about the product or it's about the business, you want to create content around that. You want to address those objections. You want to address the elephant in the room. So for me, when I first started, my objection was this is network marketing. I don't want to do this. How am I going to do this without anyone knowing that it's network marketing, <laughs> right? So... I started addressing my own objection because I knew it was an objection that other people had too. And so I started creating content around network marketing and why I decided to do it again, even though I said that I wasn't going to do it before. Okay. I had a lot of people who were interested in the business last year who were in the coaching industry, people who were online consultants and business owners and their biggest concern, their biggest worry was they didn't want to ruin their brand. So what did I do? I created content around how you can, be in network marketing, create a residual income stream, and not ruin your brand. I don't feel like I've ruined my brand. I'm more successful than I've ever been, <laughs> okay? So you have to address those objections. So earlier this year when we were dealing with all of the hair drama, with all of the negative news articles, I finally, I shied away from it at first because it made me nervous, and then I finally went within and said, okay, do I still love these products? Yes, okay, which goes back to this question right here. Do I still love this opportunity? Yes. Okay. So what did I do? I addressed the objection that people had. Oh my gosh, you can't use my name. It's going to make your hair fall out. So what did I do? I partnered with a hairstylist. I went live with Aaron Aerosmith and we talked about all of the common misconceptions that people have about my name. And that was one of the few live videos I did where I actually used the word my name in my title because it was, is it was intentional. I needed to use it to make a point to grab people's attention. And it was probably one of my most live viewed videos and most shared videos I've ever done. I want to say it had like 15, 16,000 views on it. It got shared a lot. I don't know that it necessarily generated leads, but it may have helped some people in my audience who had fears and doubts about trying it out be like, oh, you know what? You know what? I really trust Brooke and what she's saying sounds legitimate. So I'm going to give these products a try. Am I making sense here? So let's say what's one of the biggest objections that you get, drop it in the comments just a bit, one of the biggest objections you get to the opportunity. And I'm gonna teach you how to create some content around this. Go ahead and drop it in the comments. Money, I don't know how to sell. Okay, so let's say you get the objection from someone, I'm not a salesman, I don't wanna sell. Okay, hold on, hold on, let me, because I'm not gonna be able to come back to the comments. So hold on, okay, so I can't sell. So what you're gonna do, is you're going to create live content around how you can become successful in network marketing without being a salesperson or how I created an organization of a hundred people without knowing the first thing about sales. Okay. So what you're doing is you're addressing that objection. And remember we have that, um, there's like a PDF, I believe in the group under the training where I did the whole thing on Facebook live and creating titles. Use that formula to create your titles, okay? The more like BuzzFeed worthy your headline, the more intriguing your headline is, the more likely people are to actually click it and watch it. I know for me, I don't spend a lot of time watching live content. I'm super busy. So the, it has to be really awesome to grab my attention and make me stop and watch it. And keep in mind that your audience is gonna be the same. They're busy. It's becoming harder and harder to get people's attention. So you're gonna address that. Or if they don't have the money, you'll do a live video and you'll talk about 
how you started a business when you were broke, when you had negative in your bank account or whatever. Julie Stevens took out a payday loan. Okay, you guys know about payday loan places. You always know you're not in a good part of town whenever you see a payday loan place, okay, because they're usually uh, in the hood. That's just, you know, in my experience, okay? So she went over to the hood, and I don't know that she really did or not, okay? I'm just, I'm just being silly right now. But she took out a payday loan, and as of last month, a month ago, she had already earned $5 million in four years. The company just turned four, and she has earned $5 million. Five, five million. Are you guys picking this up? You picking up what I'm putting down? Okay, so you're gonna create content around that. What's another objection that you get about why people can't do the business? They, they're not a salesperson, they don't have the money. Oh, they can't go live. Okay, so then you'll create content around how to get comfortable in live video and how it's much easier than you think that it might be. You guys, I personally used to cuss at Jason whenever he brought the camera out in my face. This was before we had iPhones. This was back when we had old school cameras that did little 30 second video clips. And he was always, he's always had a camera in his hands, you guys. He was always running around taking videos of the kids when they were little. And during that time in my life, I was very uncomfortable with who I was. I wasn't confident on the inside or the outside. And I didn't want to be seen on camera. I did not want to be seen on camera. Um, and so I was not confident on camera at all. But you know how I got confident on camera? Number one, I did a lot of personal development. Number two, I practiced. I practiced, I practiced, I practiced. I thought I was going to throw up the first time I did a Facebook Live. The second time I did it, my armpits sweated profusely. <laughs> okay, so you just want to show people, hey, I'm just like you. I had these same fears, and I was able to overcome them. Okay, and we do have some people on our team who actually run a successful business without going live. I personally think their business would be bigger if they did, but that's their personal choice. So you could even say that there are people on our team who have successful businesses without going live. However, they are out doing in-person connection, networking events, hosting wine and washes and that sort of thing. Okay. So you can't just like not be in front of people. For me, it's just a platform that I like to use. It's easier. I can hop on, I can get in front of, you know, 500 people before I finish with my live broadcast. Okay. So to me, that's a lot easier than going out and trying to connect to 500 people in person. Right. Um, so you want to create content around that. What's an objection you get about the product? Give me an objection that you get about the product. Okay. All of these are basically, I just covered all this. It's expensive. Okay. So it's expensive. I thought that it was expensive too. I did. Uh, my upline reached out to me probably seven times before I finally ordered and I put it in my cart like several times and I just never processed it. Okay. Because I didn't know I had never spent that kind of money on hair products. Now I could never imagine going back. Right. So what you want to do is you want to share your personal experience. So you can say, um, you can create a live title and write live topic around why the product isn't actually as expensive as you think. Or you could, you know, would you buy a hundred dollar shampoo to grab people's attention and then talk about, it's not actually just a hundred dollar bottle of shampoo. Okay. You're getting four products. Sometimes you're getting, yeah, you're getting four products usually. Okay. So you're getting a shampoo, you're getting a conditioner, you're getting a styling product, and you're also getting the free product of the month. So really it's about $25 and it lasts, you know, you want to break it down for them. Okay. This is how long it's going to last for you. Products highly concentrated. You're going to, you want to give them all of the benefits. You know what? I felt that way too. I totally get it. I understand. I never spent that kind of money on hair products. But what I found is that number one, the products last, last me for four to five months. Okay. I have a tube of blowout cream that was still an only for you product. Most of you on this call don't even know that blowout cream was an only for you product because you weren't in the business yet. But I have a bottle of blowout cream that's over a year old. Okay. That I'm still using because the products last for a long time. It's highly concentrated. Plus, it's a high quality product. You feel good about the ingredients. It's extending your visits to the salon. It's, um, it's helping upkeep your hair because you're investing so much when you go to the salon. So think about all of the pros. Think about how you felt going in, what the common objections are, and then how you overcome those objections, okay, by giving the benefits. Yes, I felt that way too. I totally get it. Okay. So you want to address the uh, objections. So you want to ask yourself, why do I love the products? What problem has it helped me solve? 
Why do I love the opportunity? What problem has it helped me solve? Okay, I don't have to worry about money anymore. It's a pretty big problem, and most problems can be fixed by writing a check. Okay, probably just about almost anything, okay? Besides, like, if someone's sick, obviously, that's not going to help. I mean, but it could help. Let's say your mom is sick, and you need to be able to provide her. Maybe you need to pay for hospice care. That stuff's not cheap, okay? And we all know that insurance in the, in the States is crap. Jason and I don't even have health insurance for that reason, okay? So think about the different things that you're able to do as a result of your business. I know, I know Vicki is able to travel back and forth between Iowa and Alabama to be with her mom who has Alzheimer's, and she probably wouldn't be able to do that otherwise, okay? Um, someone else was telling me, I can't remember who it was that there, I think it was Mary Thielen, that she's able to go be with her father. He also is suffering from the same thing. My grandmother has it as well. It's an awful, awful disease. And she's able to go spend time with her dad that she wasn't able to do whenever she owned her daycare business. And I said, I said, Mary, think about it. Whenever you have the daycare, it's not like you could put the kids down for a nap and be like, all right, peace out guys. I'm going to go over here. Like, no, like she was confined to her home. She couldn't leave. She had to be at a certain place at a certain time. And she had to stay there during those hours. Okay. Um, so now she has the freedom to go spend that time with her dad. Okay. So think about those things that the opportunity is providing for you. It's not always about the money. In fact, the money is just the resource, you guys. The money is what allows you the freedom to do the things you want to do. Okay. So it's just the resource. Um, and the same thing with Jason last year, his dad was sick. His dad, um, he, he still, he has lymphoma. He's doing okay. Um, basically the doctors were able to extend his life for an additional two years because he was diagnosed almost two years ago. Um, but every month, um, in 2017, Jason drove from Ohio to Alabama, which is about a nine to 10 hour drive one way sucks. <laughs> um, and he did that once a month to be with his dad. He's an only child. Had we not had residual income, had I not been building this business and bringing in residual income, he wouldn't have had that freedom to be able to go and do that. He would have been tied to a computer. Okay, so that allowed him to spend that time that uh, like bonding with his dad that I'm sure once his dad's gone, he's, go he's really is going to be important to him. It's, he's really going to appreciate that he was able to have that time with his dad. Okay, um, so, so there you have it. So there's the content map. I'm probably going to post this in the yep, uptime freedom. Um, I'm going to post this in the group. I mean, I, you guys, I was able to take my daughter shopping at Michael Kors. I never had anything designer growing up. Anything that had that was designer came off of a clearance rack or we got at TJ Maxx or my Nana was sewing guest logos on my jeans. Like she would literally go in the thrift shop, find clothes that had brand name la labels. If they weren't wearable, she would take the logos off and then sew them on other clothes. Okay. So I was able to take her shopping and she was so excited that I allowed her to get not one, but two pairs of shoes. I thought she was going to fall over. She's like, you mean I don't have to decide? And I was like, would you like both of them? She said, yeah. I said, I, then I want you to get both of them. And we don't spoil our kids, but the reason I did that was because I wanted her to know that life doesn't have to be either or. Look, if you work hard, like you can have it all. Like you can have whatever it is that you want, whatever. And if it's shoes, you can have as many shoes as you want. Okay. And apparently this, this is something that's very important to women, according to my uh, survey I did last night. Okay. So um, I just wanted to go over this with you guys so you understand the three main types of content that you're creating. And I want you to ask yourself, am I creating content in each category? Because I think that some people aren't doing all three, and then that's why they're not converting people into sales. So the first thing is your network expansion. You're bringing people into your network by providing value, by providing value. Last year, I blew it up. I was the queen of Facebook Live. This year, I haven't been as consistent with it. Okay. I, I will admit I get in my flow sometimes and I'm going, 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 going this year. I haven't been as consistent, but last year when I was building and growing like crazy, I was doing a lot of content that helped me expand my network. I was doing a lot of content that was value packed and shareable. People were tagging people in it. People were sharing it. People were sharing it to their group, sharing it in messenger, um, that sort of thing. Okay. Um, I was sharing my expertise. And even though I was just starting in network marketing, I was taking those things that I was learning, like, oh, we hit this goal. This is what we did to hit this goal. And so I would break it down and then I would share it. So on Black Friday last year, I had been into the business, what, 10 months at that point? We did a live the next day or Monday after the holiday weekend telling people these were the things that we did to push our team to $200,000 in sales. 
Okay, so you don't necessarily have to be an expert at something as you're learning something, you can teach it, okay? Um, and then storytelling. Storytelling is where you are sharing your life with people, okay? You're allowing people to get to know who you are. You're introducing them to the characters in your storyline. Maybe you have some big storyline where you're casting vision and then you're inspiring people with your journey, right? You're bringing maybe your kids into it, your family, your pets, your business, maybe your coffee guy or whatever it is. You're, I even brought my personal trainer and my chef, which that sounds crazy because this time last year, I never could have imagined even or uttering those words. I feel like I sound pretentious, um, but I brought those people into my storyline because that's a way for me to show people, hey, when you work hard and you reach this level of success, which I can guide you and show you how to achieve, you can have these things. You can have, you, you guys, it's honestly not that expensive for me to have a personal chef. I pay her $15 an hour. She might work $10, she might work 10 hours a week. So I'm paying her 150 bucks a week about, a little more last week because I had her do a presentation or I had her make food for the um, event last week. But even then it was like 200 and something dollars. So I'm paying her about $150 a week. She's doing my grocery shopping for me. She's making my food. Right? I'm not having to worry about what I'm going to make. I'm not having to worry about running to the grocery store between getting the kids here and there. Okay. And so like, that's why I brought, that's why I hired her because it's made my life easier. Right? So she's one of the characters in my storyline, but it also serves as a purpose to inspire people. Okay. To inspire people. So your storytelling is one of the most important things because I honestly think that that's how I've become so successful. Sometimes I will tell people I'm a professional storyteller because I have literally shared my life story on social media over the last decade and made a lot of money as a result. Okay. So storytelling is going to be really important because people want to know who you are. They want to know who you are before they do business with you. They do. It's the truth. Um, the, and then the third type of content is your lead generation. And that is where you are specifically talking about your product. Um, or your opportunity, okay? And for those of you that have other businesses, this stuff applies for that too. I want you to understand that, that this formula is not just for network marketing. I use this formula in pretty much every business I've ever done. Um, and, then, and I did all of this before Facebook Live even existed. So I wasn't doing a lot of um, network expansion stuff. And you know what I kind of was, because I was sharing my journey, but I was also giving the content, the valuable content I was learning along the way. Like with my health journey, okay? So your lead gen is going to be talking about your products, how they've helped you, your opportunity, and then overcoming the objection. And that's going to help you generate those leads. So does anyone have any questions? Let's see. Chat. I'm going to open up the chat here. Does anyone have any questions? The hardest objection I get is just silence. Yeah, I mean, not everyone's going to respond to your messages, so it's a numbers game. You got to continue to do this. <laughs> you got to continue to do it. Um, let me see if anyone has any questions. How much of each? Let's see. Okay. Um, so lead gen is going to be probably. Remember how we did the rule of 15, the, um, it was like 10, four, one. So I would say that most of your content needs to be a network expansion and storytelling. And then probably just like a fourth of your content needs to be lead generation. I mean, it's just going to vary. Um, it just depends on how good the content is. If every day you're trying to sell me on your hair products, like every single day, I'm probably going to tune you out. So like I have a, I have it, a, a I don't really like rules. Rules are made to be broken, but I have a general rule of thumb where I tend, I usually promote once a week. I usually promote once a week. You may do two videos. Maybe you do one video where you're talking about your products and one video where you're talking about your opportunity and one video where you're overcoming objections. I think it's, I think it's really just going to depend on you, but the important thing is making sure that you're covering all three bases. And it's going to depend on how active you are on social media. I'm, I'm super active on social media. So I'm probably going to be doing more than a lot of other people, but I put most of, most of my content falls into network expansion and storytelling. And then typically once a week, I'm going to be selling and maybe I do a video about my opportunity or overcoming an objection. And then I make a post because we have a sale and I want to let people know that we have a sale 
And so then I'm making a post, but no rules. I think that rules get people tripped up and then they get in this box and then they feel like they can't move. Okay. They feel like they're like, Oh God, I don't know. I don't know. Rules stress me out. So I don't really want to give you rules. This, these are just the three content categories. So you want to write this out and ask yourself, what content have I created this week? That's going to help me expand my network. Or maybe you're a planner. I'm not really too much of a planner. That's something I struggle with personally. Um, I'm more of a spur of the moment. What's happening right now. Yes. I have a picture. Don't worry. Um, but maybe you sit down and you make a chart and you say, what content am I going to create this week? that's going to help me expand my network. What stories am I going to share this week to allow people to get to know who I am? So now that I've brought them into my network, or maybe you met them on a Facebook group, maybe they didn't come in through this content, maybe you met them on a Facebook group and friended them. Or maybe they randomly friended you because you have mutual friends. Why are they going to stay? Do they want to get to know who I am? Right? And then your lead gen. So these are the, all three of these pieces are very important and vital for you to have an excellent social media presence. So people want to connect with you. You're providing value. They like you, right? They're invested in your journey. They're invested in what you're doing, where you're going. You're casting that vision. You're inspiring them. You're bringing them into your life. You're introducing them to other characters, right? And then once you do those two things, then you've earned the right to generate the lead. Then you've earned the right to sell them. Okay. All right, guys. Well, I hope that you found this valuable. I will be posting up a document in the group afterwards. Uh, again, just like every week, I always ask you to post in the group what your takeaways are to try to, you know, get more people excited about getting on the marketing call because you guys, I get a lot of people reaching out to me that want access to this stuff and you guys get it for free. So please don't take it for granted. Please make sure you're telling your teams to do what they can as once a week to get on these calls. And uh, who knows, maybe I'll have Jason cut this one up and put it in the group, okay? All right, you guys, I hope you have a great day. I'll see you all soon. Bye-bye.